welcome to Disney Day 9. Today we will be discussing and rating Sleeping Beauty. Boo, could you take the lead? This is the last princess one in a while, Princess Aurora. I mean, seeing as princesses are a staple of Disney, it's quite surprising that for so long it was only Snow, Cinderella and um, Aurora. And um, let's be honest, nobody really knows Aurora's name. They all think she's called Sleeping Beauty. It all starts with the christening scene. Yeah. Um, one of the finest Disney openings, I'd like to think. Um, let's just stop right now and discuss that scene because that's worth a discussion on its own. Um, entrance to, I'm sure a lot of you would agree, one of the greatest Disney villains. Maleficent. I mean, she's so good. They made a film just discussing her with um, Angelina Angelina Jolie. Jolie. Um, Yeah, it's so great. It's just uh, that, like, everyone's there hushed and it's all great. And then that one person, nobody wants to show up to the party, shows up. And um, it's just all of the reactions. It's um, such a good, good scene. I, God, I love Maleficent so much. So much. Like, she's... Probably my favourite villain. Yeah, as much as I like the whole, hey, let's dive into Maleficent's backstory with the live action with Angelina Jolie and like discuss how great a character she is. I'm like, why? Just let her just be horrible and evil, but well, like, okay. beautifully evil. Like, let's be honest, everything she does is just so such a fun villain thing. There's, you, we can enjoy that. Let's be real here. So it's set in medieval times, yes? Mm-hmm. Maleficent is the ruler of the next kingdom. Mm. Happens to be a mystical, magical kingdom that the parents are like, I don't really want the witch ruler to come here. Mm. Um, but in medieval customs, you had to invite every single dignitary and noble person to any like event you were having Mm. like it was just done so like let's say the lord of nottingham was having a party they'd have to invite like the lord of like sheffield and coventry and derby and basically all like the surrounding areas even if they didn't like them it was just the done thing so that was like the ultimate disrespect move to maleficent it was like just not done so she I just don't get what they thought would happen. Like, obviously, she's going to show up and be like, oh, hey, you didn't invite me. Wouldn't it be a shame if someone cursed your baby? I get that point, but that doesn't stop her from being evil just through and through. I mean, that explains some of actions to a point, but at the same time, she's just horrible. Um, I mean, you can also say she saved Princess Aurora a lot of time. She would fall into a death-like sleep, and then the fairies, like... Change that to true love's kiss. She's saved for a lot of time. She, she ain't gonna play the dating game. She's got no time wasting, literally. It's like, boom, you woke me up. Well, guess it must be true love. Mm-hmm. Um, let's carry on with the plot. So, um, as you said, Maleficent so offended curses this sleeping princess. So um, the family hide her, um, lock her away, keep her a secret, but fate still finds her that's um quite a, a good moment in sleep and beauty as well like the whole pricking of the finger on the needle it's that fact fate and no matter what happens that's that they was they can't all... stop the curse they well they think they burn every single spinning wheel don't they which they don't that's a really good scene as well where you see the fire of all like, the spinning wheels being burnt sleeping beauty for me like i like to think that every disney is a secret moral or at least the best ones do that's kind of how i rate them and Sleeping Beauty, for me, in a way, the most important characters in Sleeping Beauty are actually the parents. Because it's all about them watching their daughter and going like, she's going to go into the real world when she grows up and she's going to be in danger. Which is why they Maleficent says, I'll get her when she turns 16, 16 when she reaches adulthood. And it's like, what parent isn't scared of their daughter when they reach that age and then kind of goes out into the real world and... Um, that's what Sleeping Beauty is about for me. And it's a little bit odd because the parents are hardly in the film. But for me, when you watch the movie from their point of view, it really improves Sleeping Beauty for me. The fairies? Flora, Fauna and Merryweather? 
Yeah, they're good fun. Uh, I love the scene where I think it's, is it Fauna, the green one? She's making the cake, the birthday cake at the start. Yeah. And she's just so terrible at it. And then she like is leaning over and she props it up with a broom. Yeah, there's a lot of dark stuff in Sleeping Beauty. And I think the fairies are basically on comedy duty, yeah. desperately trying to keep the young ones interested in the gothic stuff that's going on. And they'll make it pink, make it blue. Yeah. Make a dress. It's good. It's good. Fun scene. Um, yeah, so then Sleeping Beauty does get pricked by the spinning wheel, goes into a deep sleep. Um, and needs Prince Charming to come. Uh, Philip. Philip. Prince Philip, who she's previously met, uh, wandering through the woods. Um, they have the whole once upon a dream sequence. Um, obviously she doesn't know she's a princess because she's raised in the woods with her aunts, who are the fairies. Um, basically they're going to take her back to the castle after her 16th birthday when all danger has passed. Mm. And she doesn't actually realise that the guy who she bumps into wandering through the forest is her fiance because they have been betrothed since he was mm. she was literally newborn and he was about three and it's a great scene where he goes back to the castle and is like oh um yeah i know i'm betrothed to that princess that i've never seen and nobody's ever seen um but i found this girl in the woods who i really like and his dad king hubert is like well, you can't just marry a commoner he's like come on dad it's the 1400s i can do what i want now <laughs> like completely un aware that the girl who he's fallen in love with in the forest is his fiance. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think let's discuss now the fact that Aurora, hypothetically the main character, spends the entire film either a baby for the best scene or asleep for the climax of the film. Yeah, she has the least screen time of any character in that film, even though she's the uh, titular role. Yeah, it's um, it means that Sleeping Beauty... It's almost like a snake without a head. Like, who is the main character in that film? Like, um, so it's almost like the lead keeps on jumping. Like, we keep our hand off. I say I think the parents are really interesting. However, to a point, this is actually the first film where I think the prince is more prominent than the princess. Yeah, Philip's definitely Philip definitely gets more screen time. And, like, um, that whole fight scene where Maleficent turns into this dragon. Oh, amazing. And, I mean, the dragon in the film's great. We'll go down to Disneyland and check out their mechanical dragon. Disneyland Paris. It's under the castle. And um, just in the parades, it's just fantastic. Until it catches on fire. Not so fantastic. Um, but the prince does all of the brave stuff. And, like, in fairness, it's quite nice having... Uh, a prince that has a little bit more character than um well he is the first prince that's basically got character isn't it because prince florian in snow white does nothing mm. he literally has no character he just meets her by a wishing well shows up at the end and then they go off together like he does nothing prince um henry is his actual name he's prince charming in cinderella mm -hmm. again chases a girl gets married but as we said in our discussion of Cinderella, the whole point is that um, the, the film isn't about the male. Like, Cinderella's a stronger character because yeah. the male's so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, not developed. But in many ways, putting more development into the male character will help make it more feminist because it's not the princess marrying the handsome man, it's the princess marrying the developed character. And this character literally fights through a dragon and an army it's of thorns for her. Yeah, that's scary as well. Like, I remember the scene where... Um... Maleficent's explaining to... I can't remember if it's the parents... Oh, she's explaining to Philip, isn't she? Because she kidnaps Philip. Mm -hmm. And she's explaining to him, like, well, she's going to be asleep for a hundred years. Mm. Um, the fairies put the rest of the kingdom into that sleep mm. with her. Mm. And I guess Philip's kingdom as well. Because Philip... Obviously, it's not actually a hundred years that she's asleep for, but... They put the whole kingdom there into the sleep so that when she wakes up, like, <laughs> everyone she knows isn't dead. Mm -hmm. um, but Maleficent tells that story, doesn't she, where she's like, well, by the time you get out of here, you're going to be an old man. And then it does, like, the animation to go along with that. And it shows Philip as, like, a really elderly man, like, really frail, trying to battle through the thorns and everything to get to her. Mm. And that was really worrying <laughs> for me as a child. Yeah, but Sleeping Beauty's got some strong moments. It's um, again, that's just a shame the lead isn't there. The the 
lead duties fall to the prince, kind of the fairies. And again, Maleficent just is... I think it helps Maleficent become that strong villain because none of the good guys really stand up to her in terms of the memory banks. Do you remember Sleeping Beauty for the villain? Yeah, it's strange. When I um, started... Um this um discussion i was like ready to absolutely pan the film like i was just there like i don't remember sleeping beauty being one of the fun ones and um but as we've carried on this video i remembered all the things i like about it yeah i guess if you don't view it as a princess movie and view it as like just a non-princess animated film it really does hold up as a story and there's enough characters in there like philip and the fairies and maleficent mistress of evil and the parents just to kind of it, I think it really holds its own as when you take the princess out of it. Yeah, no, definitely. Um Yeah, no, so I've actually I guess that's the fun things about these videos. I've managed to convince myself that Sleeping Beauty is a better film than I thought it was. Fun fact. Yeah, we could do a fun fact. So um it took them six years to make Sleeping Beauty. And the first Disney Park actually served as marketing for the film. So the Disney Park opened, I think it was four years before the film came out. Uh, in 1955, I believe. This one came out in 59. And obviously when it opened, the castle that was in the park was the Sleeping Beauty Castle. Mm -hmm. And then in 57, there was a walkthrough exhibit open in the park, um, in the castle, which was like scenes from Sleeping Beauty. Mm -hmm. which was again still two years prior to the release of the film and a lot of those scenes that were included in the walkthrough exhibit were actually deleted from the film mm -hmm. for various reasons so it actually like served as like a like highlight reel of stuff that didn't quite make it into the film that's quite cool uh right uh rating um um shall i start yeah you can start go for it uh so like i said i came in to pan it but I kind of convinced myself it was better than it was I still think it's quite a middling one so I'm going to go down the middle I'm going to make it one higher than Alice and Peter Pan just because I think it's more Disney so I'm going to go six um I'm also going to go six yeah okay purely for Maleficent yeah Maleficent's a good yeah. character um yeah. yeah um definitely the weakest princess though so for those keeping school we don't like Aurora, but the film was saved anyway. Yeah. I like her more than Snow White. Okay, yeah. She has less time to be annoying. And on that note... We are off. Have a magical rest of your day.